O M G. It's totally local after dark, like you've never seen it before. My guest tonight is the rowdy and rambunctious Adam Simmons from the Simmons and More podcast. How's it going, man? Uh, I don't know that I'm feeling rowdy or rambunctious, but we can most certainly try. Um, right. I'm here. Yeah. Uh, I'm fucking. I'm excited to fucking hang out, dude. I haven't seen you in a while. So. Yeah, man. It's been it's been a while. Uh, yeah, in the real world, when you're out there, you've just got you know you've got the eye of the tiger, basically. So that's all I mean. Yeah. You know. Uh, now, now that the entire restaurant industry is shut down, um, I do not have the eye. I barely have the leg of a tiger oh man dude have you been uh have you been pulling up to that uh they have the, they have like the 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 service industry industry like free meal deal at, at in asbury the asbury dinner table or whatever it's called Oh, do they yeah i had them on here and they were talking about how like it's not only like it's so restaurants can you know if they have if they have food and they have nothing to do they figured out this whole program and part of the like an arm of the program is to uh to help people out in the service industry which i thought was fucking cool um cheers dude salute yeah clank bink Kirk clank hold on i can make the here we go there you go dude you totally pulled the leo move man i was like hey man you want to do this you want to do this i didn't hear from you and then you're playing a little game of chicken right before 10 you're like hey are we doing this or what yeah, well, you told me to show up. You said, hey, fucking send it. Oh, excuse me. You said, you okay. said hey, it's send first. it. It's after dark. You said, hey, send it. And yeah. I was like, okay, I'll send it. Yeah. And then you and then you, you gave me the Philly fake out with the 733. I'm like, that don't sound right. I'm like, it's 732. It's got to be 732. I and was pretty I, sure you had my phone number, but I, I also. I have such a weird, I have a weird thing where I, I, te- I like get in touch with people socially, like social media wise. And then I don't make take that next step, mm-hmm. you know. I'm not like so. But what's like, up? here's the thing. Here's the thing. I gave you my phone number at dinner. Like we were we were exchanging a meal. We were consuming a meal and alcohol together. Was that at that that place you took us after your podcast? Yeah, at a, was at so, a local establishment. I was so gone, dude. I was so gone. Yeah, that night. I know. I know. We brought you out in the deep waters. Oh man, Long Branch, late night. <sighs> so what's up, dude? How are you? You know, it's so funny because like I'm doing good. Like the whole the whole quarantine thing. Like I'm, I'm like, there's a part of me that's just a natural recluse. So like I can do this. This is fine, right. dude. I could live in a bunker, whatever. Right. But uh, today it's like I was interacting uh, with the situation, and it just gave me this anxiety. It had nothing to do with what's going on. It was like a work thing, and like this this person was bugging, and I'm like, why is this like, you know? Do you ever just get anxiety, and you're just like, what the fuck's going on, you know? Bro, you're talking to Captain Anxiety. <laughs> um, I think we've talked about this before, but you're all up on the CBD, right? I, I most certainly am. Yeah. Uh, I use hemp bombs specifically. Oh. Um, they're super good. They they have like a CBD isolate uh, and their gummies are unbelievable. And actually, I have a coupon code. Um, I know that there's no no free plugs or whatever, yeah, but whatever, dude. Uh, you can plug. use the code HTNOS uh, and you save like 25%. Boom. Um, which is huge if that you get like huge. one of those if you get one of those uh tinctures they're yeah, like 75 yeah. bucks you That's can get what it i use i use the yeah. oil and i like you know whatever and it's so funny because the way cbd you know what people automatically say to you is like oh is it get you well people that don't know is like oh is it get you right. high and it's like <laughs> i wish it doesn't like it doesn't get you high it does this it, it like i don't know it's so hard to describe because you don't feel anything which is mm-hmm. the effect of it you know like you're just kind of you're just like naturally relaxed just base level you know it's uh-huh. not like you're like you know tripping balls you're just kind of like not feeling shitty basically right and i i have taken enough to like if they were <laughs> to get you effed up like i would be effed up like they sell they have these like little packets of the gummies or whatever they're kind of like the welsh's grape snacks uh-huh uh and i took like 15 of like packs one time because i was just like you just uh chris see what happened? yeah chris from uh hashtag no offense was he came up and um it was around uh, San PC 200 when you guys came and hang out uh-huh. with us with wild. Ming. And uh, he brought like a whole crate. Oh, man. So I was like, yo, let's see if I could fuck push this to the limit. <laughs> like, how many do you got? I'm going to take like 20. So I took like 10 or 15. And I was just like super, super relaxed. And I was like, man, <laughs> they definitely don't get you high. It's they not don't. like an exponential effect or whatever. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad I have that because I was, I was bugging before and I'm like, I was playing with my dog and I'm like, my dog don't care, dude. Dog wants to play, right. playing with the dog. I'm like, 
Why should I have anxiety about it, man? You know? Yeah, I get anxiety in the weirdest the weirdest ways. Like some um, random shit will trigger you. Yeah. And it's um it's weird because I saw a lot of my anxiety is tied to IBS. Like I have I, I have IBS and oh, yeah. it's like a snake that eats its own tail. So like my anxiety exacerbates my IBS yeah. and my IBS exacerbates my anxiety. So it's just like around in a circle. It's like, oh I might barf. Oh I might shit. Oh, yeah. I might yak like i'm gonna do everything all at the same time and now i'm worried about it but now i really actually might do it yeah like it really it's funny too because like your mental like you could like you could definitely psych yourself into something like that Mm -hmm. and you could psych yourself out and sometimes you can't even help you're just thinking about you're like oh fuck here it comes yeah yeah your body's like oh we're going send yeah we're gonna send it full send um i was uh i went on a date with a girl for the first time uh like we we were talking online or whatever uh-huh. uh do a quarantine and i was like hey like you know why don't we just go for a walk or whatever uh-huh. super low-key and Six then like apart. yeah like so we met up and then the second i saw her i was like oh i have to leave oh man like i have i gotta go yeah 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 yeah. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. she's like are you all right and then we started talking about it and then i kind of like leveled down a little bit oh. and i was like yeah i got a, like a little bit um you, you get a little bit of anxiety the, uh-huh. and she goes, Oh, don't, don't tell me that you have anxiety. Cause she, so she started being nervous too. And I was just like, Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I know how that goes. One time my friend made me this barbecue sauce, like this barbecue chicken or whatever. And I was going to see this fucking fly girl. Like anyway. So like I went to go hang out with her and, and she was, she was wearing these, these little, I don't know if I should, well, whatever. I don't know who's listening, but like little, little Blake, like a little mini skirt we're just hanging out like she looked good whatever but my friend used like instead of using like his his like it was his grandfather's barbecue recipe but his mom changed it to make like vegetarian so there's like a lot of onions in it and shit yeah and like you sit down and it just gave me the worst gas and i'm like i'm like there's no way there's no way i can navigate this her bathroom was like in her bedroom and her house was like her apartment was like really small so i just had to bounce i was just like i was like yo i was like i, I forgot i had something to do blah 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 and i just made up some excuse and fucking bounce. yeah i fart on do. the first i fart on the first date all the time every time do you do finger I like- guns when you do it are you like <laughs> hey <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I'm at this point, you know, when you're, you're about my age, it's like when you're 33, 34 years old, a little older, um, but yeah, yeah, well, I'm, I was kind of given the, the air of, you know, secrecy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't want to expose you. I mean, to be the 42 year old man that you are, um, <laughs> the 57 year old man. Yeah. I'm you are approximately 77 years old. Yeah. I've seen um, a lot. <laughs> I've been, I've been around, I've been you know, around. remember the great depression? I was there. <laughs> I was there. I um, felt it. So I, I lay it out in the jump. I'm like, yo, what do you like? What do you have like that you're anxious about? Like, what are you self-conscious about? Like, tell me about it now. And they're like, I don't really have anything. I was like, oh, I, I there's a very good potential. I might shit my pants <laughs> on one of our dates. And they're like, excuse me. I was like, oh, I have IBS. Like, and then I go into the whole story about how like I took this thing called clenbuterol and it was a, is a steroid and uh-huh. it fucked up the acid base balance in my oh. stomach and now because of it i have ibs so like i have farts that are treacherous they smell oh, like man. the deathly hallows like i have farts that smell like 9 11 oh, my dude. farts are like they make the air the consistency of the floor of a fema tent they're that's, very disgusting that's like, uh, like awful that's like uh when you when you have like protein powder like protein shakes and you just take too yeah. much yeah that happens if i eat like a brussels sprout dude you epic- know like when you have those epically disgusting fart, that's like a normal everyday fart for me you gotta, so i have to like i have to get it out in the open like first i gotta link you up with uh my home girl uh lauren grogan who uh she puts it right out on front street on her website like she suffered from ibs like bad and like it fucked her up and like she does like dietary stuff you know but yeah. uh it's well a- normally in an everyday uh circumstances i balance my diet super super well but because we're in quarantine and because like i'm not working and i'm not like eating super fresh food all the time and like sometimes i'm eating ramen sometimes i'm just making like a chicken noodle soup and freezing it and then keeping it uh and then throwing it out and eating it my my diet is all over the place plus yeah. you boil the to drink the distilled grapes you know what i mean mm-hmm. Got a couple of bottles of whiskey that are empty now yeah uh, so i spent it about Bet. weeks inside so like my body is just like okay cool party time we're gonna <laughs> fart all the time we're gonna have gnarly shits nice. um so like 
when I talk to girls, I'm like, yo, dog, like, here it is. Like, did you ever see Harry Potter? And they're you, like, yeah, of course. You don't, like, even, dude, you don't even wait till like a second date, man. No, I, I, well, I don't have time to do that because here's the thing about this. Um, if they're down, then they're down. That's true. There are no walls. And if they're not down, get it out now. I mean, I guess it's good to be like, hey, this is what happens. And then like, if you have to like, maybe excuse yourself, at least she'll know you know yeah. yeah and i have the luxury of being moderately attractive like yeah. i'm for sure like a 7.5 oh, out of 10 oh yeah or more depending on a good day yeah. if i comb my hair and shit uh -huh. um and i have a pretty okay personality i can talk my way out of just about anything pretty being good a, a podcaster so yeah they're like nah, he farts oh well everyone farts my dad farts and i love my dad and i'm like that's right come yeah. on in baby like we're gonna it's we're warm. gonna do some farts yeah. we're gonna do some farts together there you go um so then, you know, immediately their guard is dropped down because they're like, oh, he's so he's so open. Yeah. He's just like, you know, he's so he's so welcoming. Oh, man. I uh, I was really bad at dating. I was really bad at like, yeah, I'd get super nervous or I don't know. I was really horrible at it. I missed all this shit, though. This fucking uh, not saying I missed it, but like but the, the online whole, dating shit. Yeah. Like the it's Tinder. Overrated. Me, and, Super me overrated. and my wife actually met each other on OkCupid, but like we didn't. We didn't. But the actually, computer one. Yeah. Like we didn't. Yeah. But we didn't like we didn't we didn't go on date. We, I, I was about I was about to give up on on it because I was like, this is stupid. I had so many like I, I, I've got stood up. I had some girl tell me she's like, you don't look like your picture. I'm like, what the fuck is that supposed <laughs> to mean? You know, like I wasn't doing any weird angles. That's just what I look like. But uh, and then I was about to give up on it. And I was like, all right, well, there was a list of girls where I was just like, I might as well message these girls because I had them and I never messaged them. And she was, I think, the first one and the only one I messaged. And she wrote back and was like, yeah, let's hang out. So, like, I, that's that was our only interaction on there. And then I, I shut that shit down. But now there you go. You got like fucking this swiping shit. And like I have like the youngins tell me about how you just, you know, people are just down to fuck and you just kind of like swipe, swipe, swipe. And it's yeah. Good yeah. To I mean, they are uh, a lot of the times now it's it's they're just down to like they want to see what your pee pee looks like. <laughs> Do um, they really like ask? Are they like, let me see your, well, no, I mean, they, it's, there are times where it's like a girl will be like, send you a picture. And then she is like hanging out in her underpants That's and you're cool. like, and she got like a shirt on and you're like, Oh, like this is the opening. She's like playing the game so that you send one that's like do girls really well, want to see that though? Cause like some do like, okay. some are down. Some are like awesome. They're like great chicks. Those are really those well, you are always you it's like a vampire. Number. Like you got to invite the dick in. You can't just send a girl a random dick pic. Right. No, you can't go strong, hard <laughs> 12. You can't crank it to 11 immediately. You got to be like, here's a picture of me in my hoodie and my sweatpants leaning up against the wall. Oh, yeah. Or here's like a picture of my gray sweatpants. And then maybe you fluff the meat a little bit. And then she's uh, like, oh, <laughs> like, is that what's going on? Cool. Well, here are my new socks. Also, here's what my butt looks like. It's like, a, it's like, like oh, a, and then we get the ball rolling. It's like those science documentaries where birds are like dancing around and shit. Yeah, you got to do the peacock like a, dance a little bit. Yeah, it's a new like mating. It's the new mating ritual of society. Dude, you got to fluff it for the dance. That's just what it is, you know. So, what did you guys when you guys met up? Aside from the IBS stuff, what did you guys did you guys talk about? Like what's going on? Or like, well, we've been we've been talking um, for a little bit. Like I've been dating around. Mm -hmm. um, I've been single since October. Dating in the time of a pandemic, man. Right? Yeah. Uh, and she and I have been, we've been communicating for a while, but through the pandemic, uh -huh. we both like, it ended up being like, I posted something on my Instagram story and then she commented and then, Oh, let the dance begin. And then we were just like, Oh, we're going back and forth. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then it's just become more and more and more, um, which is cool because she's, it turns out that like, she and I grew up in very similar scenes. Mm -hmm. She just grew up in Philly uh -huh. and I grew up here. So like the same music scene, like we, we enjoy the same art. We love the same authors, the same art. We're talking about Frank Facetta for like three days. There you go. And then like, she's like, Oh, Hey, what do you think about this album? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Oh, like I, I enjoy every time I die. Like low teens is a good album, but I think that the new black is better. And she's like, what? You're fucking wrong. <laughs> come over and we'll listen to low teens. And I was uh -huh. like, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Um, 
That's so it's nice. cool. It's, it's it's chill as fuck. Um, Did you guys like vet each other as far as like light lights all down, la- full latex body? <laughs> I suit. don't. So I don't give a fuck. I was born in America. I'll die in America. I don't give a fuck, Jack. It'd be seventeen seventy six up in this bitch. Um, but she is most certainly like that. And I and I've been on a couple of dates um, recently where people were kind of like, "Hey, like, do you feel sick?" Interesting. Or you, do you have like you a just cough walk or a in, sniffle? Like, like get get your face all wet and walk in. Yeah, and coughing and stuff. Yeah. Well, here the thing about all of this is is that everyone on Sam PC had the coronavirus in January. Oh wow! We, we all did. We had it. It was the flu, and we all got our asses kicked. The blue and it was flu? over. In, yeah. Who who but, was the outbreak monkey, dude? Who, who I'm not was really working? sure. We all kind of got it at the same time because wow. Bobby Light and I got it at around the same time. Well, we both work in kitchens. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Bobby Moore came over and we all smoked and we were like, hey, we're a little sick. And he's like, yeah, I'm a little sick, too, whatever. And then the uh, next week we all saw each other and I sounded like Bob from Bob Burgers and he sounded like uh, you, fucking Ving Rames. And <laughs> you got to get that shit. You got to get tested, dude. You got to see because that's good. Then if you have the antibodies, you rode the white wave and then you fucking. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, we uh, Bobby Light and I do a lot of the probiotics. Mm. Uh, we we eat a lot like I, I that love shit's becoming uh, serious now. Like people are exercise. Yeah. And fucking. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. Like I've been I've been pumping like well all throughout winter. We like we overdose on on zinc and vitamin C, vitamin D. The, all that vitamin, shit's supposed to be the, the fucking Corona. Yeah, fucking vitamin A right and probiotics. We that's just our winter mm-hmm. regimen of what we put in our protein shakes and stuff like that. And we always try to incorporate it. Uh, we have like little tinctures and oils and like vitamins and stuff like that that you take. Um, but that paired with the spirulina and spirulina is like fourteen times your daily. Uh, fruits and vegetable servings Seriously? per tablespoon or but whatever what about, it is. Like, I mean, aren't you supposed to chew stuff? Aren't you supposed to like? Isn't there some kind of like chemical reaction or to something? the mastication? Yeah. yeah. So you're what you're doing is if you're you're drinking a smoothie, mm-hmm. that mastication process, although it is beneficial for you to do it directly into your mouth, if you are blending it up and then immediately drinking it, it's essentially the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um. You. And when you're using fruits and vegetables, if you freeze them, you're freezing them at, you know, if you know what you're doing, you freeze them at their peak uh, vitamin output. Mm -hmm. And then you just you go for it. So the spirulina, though, that's like your whole that's your that's what you need right there. You do a little dab of that shit and you're and you're good. Yeah. And it's so it's just like a nutrient dense algae. Mm. That's all it is. Um, I, I have it, some upstairs. I just didn't it tastes know weird, yeah. and it turns everything green, like super super green. Just mix it in with whatever, and you're fucking. Yeah, like you get a couple of frozen bananas, a scoop of peanut butter, a yeah. scoop of like Vega protein plus greens, a little spirulina. Man. Call it a day, dude. A, a little peanut butter, maybe a little Nutella if you're feeling froggy. Some you know. Butter. Okay. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. I hear what you're yeah. saying. I got to start. And then, and then it's just like a treat. And then you're just exercising, like exercising, man. I got to hit it because I am like I made a <laughs> I made a music video the other day and I just left it in. But like I just have this like this like gut. This just like it just stick like it's sticking out. And I'm like, you know what? You're getting that dad bod because you're a dad now, dude. No, man. Seriously. I, I've been fucking it's like busy that th- I've been telling everybody this. I've been in quarantine since December. Like I, I've been I've been Jeez. on lockdown since the kid yeah. popped out, you know, like just that's right. Being there doing shit. So I don't know. I, w- I was uh, I was I was I, I, I transitioned into this quite nicely. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. su- super easy. You were just like, oh, this is regular. <laughs> this is just nothing doing this. Yeah. So I'm a little Since Christmas, you know, yeah, I could totally fucking keep keep it up at least for a little, little, little longer, you know. What about those stimulus checks, dude? Did you see? Did you did you did you get one? Uh, no, this is a sore subject for me oh, um, because I've you know I'm on unemployment, as I said, the uh-huh. entire uh, restaurant industry is shut down. Yeah. So I haven't gotten. I've filed for three weeks. I haven't gotten one check for unemployment. I'm uh, still waiting for all three of those. I'm waiting for my tax return to come back uh, and I'm waiting for my stimulus check plus the extra check for the people that are on unemployment. They get an extra 500 to $600 plus stimulus. Mm-hmm. I haven't even gotten that. I haven't gotten anything. I can't believe it's like 12, oh, nuts. like 1200. Like that's it. They're just like, here you go. You know? Yeah. Canada is doing a thousand dollars a month. That's flat. Fucking, how ball Finland, is, that? Finland nice is, too, is doing, is doing, uh, 
two thousand a month. I mean, I don't know if eventually that just cheapens your dollar or not, but for the beginning well, I mean, of it, first the, few months, you'd be you'd be doing pretty good, you know. Yeah, but the dollar the dollar isn't as strong as it ever was as it used to be right now. Yeah, and they just printed a trillion dollars. Yeah, they're, they're just, just printing it. They're just printing they're, it. Like it, does, it doesn't mean anything. Like it's like right. Just, instead, instead, Jeff Bezos could just like not make four billion dollars yeah. this year. It, oh, like man. he's got billions and billions, you know what I mean? Like, you know, all of the, you know, all the richest people <laughs> just have to throw in a million dollars. It really, you know, like, it really, it really pisses, you know, whatever. It really pisses me off, though. Like, when I, when I see any, any fucker, like anybody doing, like, any kind of like uh, social media post where it's like a celebrity and they're in their house and you dude, see and their like, house. Oh, I'm locked in quarantine. Shut up, Ellen. Yeah. Or fucking Drake, dude. He's in this giant house and he's like, you know, or I, I turn oh, on. I get it. Have you ever, have you ever fucked around with TikTok, dude? I don't know if I'm just like a, like I'm just too old to like get it, but like I was watching it and it's like I'm watching Shaq and his family like do a dance. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Yeah. You know? What's funny is that like all of they're like paying for all of these commercials to thank essential workers yeah. instead of just paying the essential workers yeah. more money to work. Fuck, dude. Fuck. It's a bunch of bullshit. Think about mm -hmm. how this is all going to change. I was thinking about this earlier too. Like say for like like you know for for the service industry and food and shit, does this mean that like food trucks will be more kind of popular because it's like more distancey, you know? I mean, maybe you got to get that fucking you got to get that Corbo oven and like tie it to a fucking F1. Well, they make they make that oven uh, on wheels. Oh, man, you got to you got to jump yeah. on that like today right now. Because... That would be nice. Uh, I would like to buy groceries first and then. <laughs> OK, um, that's fair. That makes sense. And then I can spend 10 G's on an oven. That makes sense, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. What was it? What was what was their deal over at that fucking at that Bell Works at that building where they just like one day like the the owner came yeah, in and so, he was like get out of here see like so <laughs> uh, I Sims kind of just like everyone was working from home and then we were gonna try and stay open mm -hmm. we tried to stay open for a week and we couldn't swing it like nobody they were sending people home and yeah. then they were like okay like we're gonna clean for a couple of days and like we have to fully shut everything down. So we fully shut everything down. Um, and then thankfully my chefs are cool enough that they let us like, they let us shop. Mm -hmm. They were like, look, you're going to need to spend money on food. Mm -hmm. We are going to lose money on food. Mm -hmm. So we'll eat this. You just go shopping in our refrigerators. You just nice. take whatever well, is cool, perishable. Man, you just do it. So I came home with like, four pineapples like 17 heads of kale mm -hmm. like all types of like i a whole thing of eggs um milks all i you know like those yeah. big tubes of provolone cheese my chef was like nobody else is going to appreciate this have this <laughs> and i was like okay sick oh man um so luckily we were like onions garlic like everything zucchini all types of stuff um and luckily they let us do that That's and that cool. was like a huge weight off of our shoulders yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I'm just I'm waiting to go back to work, man. Like, yeah. and I, you know, I love my job. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love making pizza. It's my favorite thing. I do it because it's my favorite thing. I wouldn't have my job if I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I'm so miserable without fucking pizza, dude. It sucks. Like playing video games and drinking wine. It yeah. sounds really cool, but like it's fucking lame as shit, no, man. You could like, I don't know, to me personally, and uh, between you and me, like, you know, th there was a just certain, a squirrel friends. <laughs> there was a certain point in this whole process where one day I was just like, well, first of all, I, I went to I wanted to support uh, Asbury Park Brewery. So they're like still selling. So I bought like a case of beer and then I helped out this uh, this client of mine. And then they they gave me another case of beer. And I'm not saying I'm, dr I'm not drinking all the beers all at once. I have like maybe one, <laughs> you know, the weekends are a little different, couple here, couple there. Like I'm not going crazy, but there was a day where I was just like, all right, fuck it. Like kind of went off the deep end a little bit. And then I like the next day I woke up, I'm like, all right, well, I can't, I can't do that every fucking day. You know right. what I mean? Like I could, I could definitely do that, but like, I don't think i want to be doing that and you know i don't know whatever it's it's the same after a while it's just like the same old bullshit you know yeah so um 
but taking my dog for walks that's exciting that's exciting stuff and then doing the podcast i've just been fucking i've never <laughs> i've never had more people's attention as far as like you know i talk to guests and i'm just like yo you want to do this blah 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 yeah you know so, dude i cannot tell you how many podcasts i've been on in the last two like three weeks i, thought, I keep seeing that on twitter like it's like it's it's your name like just tagged and all this shit like dude did this did that did this i have done maybe 30 podcasts <laughs> like seriously i can't the thing is is like first of all it's like you know i like talking about people's experiences you know and like what people are yeah. doing and all this stuff um but there's certain things it's just like fuck man yeah corona i mean what what else like it, yeah. it's kind of like well what's good is that you have like a, a good platform here to kind of like just have a conversation you Dude, know what I, I mean? Like, I, I had these people, I, I have this insurance company I've been working with. They're local and they've been inviting these random guests on. So the last one I did one, fuck man, the days are melting together. I think it was yesterday. Is it yesterday? No, it was yesterday. Uh, during the day. And it was a, it was a fucking attorney, an insurance guy and a fucking guy that works at a bank. And we talked about like the small business association, yeah. and PPP and all these other bullshit. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but I'm like, this might be of interest to people. Right. Anything you know? other than the coronavirus. Well, it's like it's like telling people it's informing people on what they could be doing as far as working with their business and, and the banks and and how to yeah. get these this fucking loan assistance bullshit that's going on, you know, because. Yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile, on Sam PC, we're watching fucking. <laughs> The Golden Child and <laughs> and doing That's a, a good movie, dude. I mean, we did we did a whole uh, Golden Child companion podcast where like you watch the Golden Child and you can watch it with I, Sam PC. I saw the fucking I saw the the preview. Is it is it just so you would just turn you would just pause? Do you have it so that you have it like it's like uh it's like Wizard of Oz and Pink Floyd where you have a certain point where you say all right click now and then you guys kind of do it at the same time. No, we just like hey after the intro hit start you'll uh -huh. hear when the music is is uh -huh. revving up that little intro yeah, that yeah. that crazy 80s synth music you so hear cute. it just sync it up and then you can just hear us talk about eddie murphy and a little chinese girl such a weird was that a girl it's a girl are you fucking kidding me it is you're blowing it my fucking mind right it's definitely now. so they Are don't reference positive yes 100 percent. they you don't reference just, like you've you've just blown like i never thought this would happen tonight but you've you've blown my mind dude continue i'm sorry so so they don't reference the gender of the golden child yeah I except eddie murphy says so we go go ahead and just take him and bring him somewhere uh-huh and another character goes uh, kind of like that but the actress is actually a female and she is like a full-blown like 32 year old asian woman now what? um dude that's crazy yeah bobby blew my mind with that live on the podcast i was like that's not a chick he's gonna google that shit oh I'm man like, oh my god that's incredible yeah that's a classic too and like you know i was i was just given like carte blanche as a ch as a young child to watch whatever i fucking wanted to watch you awesome know? and golden child was in there and if you think about it like kidnap children with blood and the oatmeal and demons oh, dude, and shit it's really dude, fucked up demons man. and like dudes with horns and they're oh, keeping man. a baby in a cage it's and so poking them with a stick so treaty, there's a man. giant snake woman yeah oh man it was so there's weird hookers. It, it but it, it it like definitely permeated my you know me and my brother like we 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 constantly we have jokes about like that's one of the movies where it's just like you know it's just uh, underappreciated in, in when it I, I mean i guess people appreciated it when it came out but i i don't think i think it yeah but not like status. any other eddie murphy yeah movie, you yeah. know yeah. And and even now to this day, that's the only free Eddie Murphy movie that's on Amazon Prime. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to pay for that, but you have to pay for like coming to America and like 48 hours. I mean, I I would say it's up there. 48 hours is I mean, they're all good. They're all great movies. He like you know, I I think he's he's like hinted at uh, like on random shows he's been on, but I don't think he just did that movie, but I think I think he was saying he was going to do stand up again. 
He he said he would consider it. Yeah, he, he was, um, he was supposed shit. to do uh, Cars a show. Netflix special yeah. when um when Chappelle did one. Uh huh. So it's it's coming. Okay. They gave him like a gajillion and a half dollars. Did you see that Chappelle uh, Mark Twain award thing? He won I haven't Mark seen it yet. Uh, um, it's fucking it's in, it's super interesting. You know, there's some funny parts, but it's overall like just you know. Like as you're passionate, like I always find it interesting when people are like super like you're passionate about pizza. You miss fucking pizza. You love fucking pizza, man. You love making that shit. And like when people talk about Dave Chappelle, as far as like, you know, in the comedic circles, like he started super young and he was good at it. Like, boom, like right away, just fucking did it. And I'm like, that's just like that's just such a gift to be able to be like so honed in and focused and be like, this is what I fucking you know, this is what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? I wish. I'll tell you what, I wish that I knew what I wanted to do earlier in life oh, because I wish that I could have done it sooner. And had I listened to the people around me, hmm. I would have done it. <laughs> but I'm stupid. <laughs> and I was like, nah, yeah. you don't know shit. That's I'm going to do this tale, thing. My friend, that's the classic. Yeah. The, my problem is now I still don't even know. I'm just kind of like, you know, bumbling through at best. You know, I don't want to be hard on myself, but I'm just going to say bumbling through at best but i've made it this far you know i got a brick wall behind me it's painted colorful uh you know what what more can you ask for really i mean really you can't ask for much more than that <laughs> you know yeah I i'm saving all these videos i don't know who's gonna maybe the aliens will come down and they'll be like let's look at some youtube videos but i'm saving i all hope these so <laughs> dude are you are you into are you into like ufos and shit bro don't even start <laughs> <laughs> do you like UFOs? That? Bro, yeah. UFOs. I think that there's a subterranean alien race that oh. controls the planet that oh. lives within the lizard people. Like, yeah, I think that the reptilians live within a very complex series of tunnels have, underneath the Earth's crust you, and the watched, Anunnaki. Yeah, no, like we could talk, dude. You if you want to talk, fucking UFOs. Get out of my face, <laughs> dog. You know that I have a, a podcast called The Creatures of the Night where we no. specifically talk about uh conspiracy theory is like if you want to go deep we can go fucking deep jack i mean i had to right before all this shit went down i was listening to a lot of uh sam tripoli and i had to like i had to just cut it out because Loyal to the foil like, baby sam if you're listening you know I, who i am i was like i was like i can't and i saw bobby light dude he, he he's like he's made some comment on sam sam tripoli's like post and then sam yeah. tripoli wrote back i didn't know uh bobby light was like fucking down with the you know, conspiracy. Oh, dude, dude, we're <laughs> down with the foil here for sure. We are, we are loyal to the foil in this house. Dude. Um, but Sam Tripoli is in periphery mm -hmm. to my existence. Mm -hmm. Um, so me, Chris Watsky, and Jason Almy of Shit Happens When You Party Naked, and um, no offense, hashtag no offense show, respectively, we got together and we did an episode with this guy named Nick Hinton who wrote a book about the Saturn time cube, oh. which is a hexagonal storm on Saturn. I've seen that. Yeah. Um, so we did. Watching, we, but yeah, we did an episode with with Nick and then like we're all like we're super, super tight and we talk about silly shit all the time. So we got together um when everyone came to New Jersey and then we did a bunch of mushrooms and smoked a lot of weed and then did another episode of shit happens when you party naked. So, Oh man, um, we did go? a third. Oh, it was incredible. <laughs> it was fantastic because we're fucking, we're weirdos. Yeah. So we went super, super fucking weird and super deep. I mean, shit's... but we did it in person and it was great. So we were just like, yo, we should do this all the time. So every two weeks on the inner circle podcast network, uh, feed we released the creatures of the night uh named after the sam Bran uh the sarah Bran oh fucking laura brannigan sorry i'm this bottle of wine is fucking oh, starting to rip my brain to shreds the laura brannigan song um lose control mm -hmm. 1984 i think it was i i live among the creatures of yeah. the night yeah so that's us we're the creatures of the night she that's lives among ones. us um, <laughs> uh yeah and, dude and we just we just talk about fucking silly shit so when we did that episode with nick hinton immediately following that like we were tagging sam tripoli and everything and then he started talking about the saturn time cube uh -huh. and then every time we bring up like a topic he'll start to like just drop it 
in his shows. Wow. So in his periphery, like nice. he knows who we are. He he mentioned some crazy, crazy shit. And I was like, you know what I was getting into was like that ancient civilization shit, which let me tell you something. Like I have archaeologist friends and it is so of fucking course you true. do. You fucking dork. <laughs> it is so true that they 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 do not want to accept that there were these other civilizations, possibly like giants living among us. Like there's certain things that uh, the Aztec or, or some like, you know, uh south american like like indigenous people were living as, as high up north as georgia like i bring this shit up to him and he's like oh no that's not true blah 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 and i'm like i don't that's because it. he believes those books why yeah. because they're old because some fucking idiot wrote it yeah, shut up man i yeah. i met this uh i met this um this woman she lives down she lives she lives in monmouth county somewhere and uh mary tobin and she she does channeling and shit right and awesome she, she wrote this I'm into it she wrote this book about uh mary magdalene and like the fucking you know all the shit that was going on then right and i read the book and i'm like I'm like, yo, this doesn't match history at all. And she's like, yeah, like everything, you know, that we were told is like bullshit and blah, blah, blah. But like she channeled this shit, you know, so it's 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 some like, you know, it's some it's some it's some far out there shit. But she she seems to be like super chill and on point, you know? Yeah. Hey, look, dude, it I don't know the full complexity of why information is not shared as readily as it is but there is most certainly some stifling of the amount of information that the public gets definitely there's and, too many weird things going on right bro now. there's too many fucking weird things too many like dude. and even if you want to say like like i'm never gonna go and say that the earth is flat mm -hmm. right yeah, but that's i'm a, that's like have I have I considered it? I'm not going to answer that, but I'm going to say right. it's definitely not. Right, right. I mean, I'm married to the globe. I yeah. and like the, the sphere. Doesn't... Yeah, I'm I'm in because I've seen the other ones and they're all circles. So yeah. why? And it, that makes the least amount of sense to me. And if you could make a flat Earth, like, why wouldn't you just make a round? Like, if you have the technology to construct a planet, why would you make it flat? Like. It's so stupid, you know, but I, I just don't understand the benefit of that. <laughs> now, do I understand the benefit of faking the moon landing? Oh, definitely. Even uh, in fucking uh, Kubrick's backyard in his basement somewhere. Yes, that definitely. I understand. Well, do I think that ancient civilizations were influenced in some way by interacting with maybe something that was otherworldly air quotes yes the craziest i'll get is apparently hollow earth yeah air quotes which is the subterranean uh lizard people that live within a complex series of tunnels underneath the earth which i didn't know was hollow earth i was talking all this shit about hollow earth for years like of course that there's magma and a core and all mm -hmm. this other shit and then chris was like no 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 no, no. hollow earth means that there's tunnels and then that's where the fucking lizard people live and i was like what i've been saying that for years let's do it yeah I'm there you kidding. go i'm up for that Dude, did you ever see that? There's like this UFO. I, I was watching some shit the other day. Some some person in Detroit p posted this video, and then somebody in Ohio posted a similar video, and it was like UFO-y kind of stuff. And then somebody pointed out Chinese lanterns, and I'm like, okay, you know, m maybe it was. Maybe it maybe Not that high up, is. though. Not that it, high up, though. But it, you know I've seen it, Chinese lanterns, dog. Do you know what they it don't had move, me? They don't move back and forth longitudinally had, and latitudinally. It had me, Those it, are two words that are not words, but they're words now. When I lived when I lived in Albuquerque one day, I was going in super bougie, going into the Whole Foods. And before I went into the store, I looked up in the sky and there was like a, a dot in the sky. Like it was, it yeah. was still sunny. You know, it was the sun was going down, whatever. And I brought it up to somebody. And they're like, oh, it was a weather balloon, blah, blah, blah. And then in the news, you know, the next day they said, oh, it was a weather balloon, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like thinking back on it. And I'm just like, you know, maybe it wasn't a weather balloon. You know, maybe if they were planning on putting a weather balloon in the sky, wouldn't they notify people ahead of time? You I mean, know? you can just Google it. You could just look up the flight patterns. It's totally like a thing that you could just look up. Oh, wow. Well, it's they're, it's they're available. Good. You know I'll what I mean? You, 
I'll tell you this much. So though. if if they were to do it, they would have it online, and you would I, have seen it. I did see. I did see a UFO in in Shark River River Hills. I saw it uh, in, in the sky. It moved around, and then it disappeared. And like it was a clear sky, and it was the weirdest fucking thing I've ever seen. And it, you know, it didn't didn't last that long, but it was certainly certainly, you know, rem- you know, memorable. Um, but. Uh, I can't explain that, you know, I can't explain what that was. Correct. So, you know? um, you know how Facebook has those things where they pop up and they're like, Oh, eight years ago today, yeah. you said yeah. that bitch suck my dick. She sucks. <laughs> and I, I'm never going to date ever again. And five years ago, you were like, I'm so in love with the same girl I was talking about a couple of years ago. Um, so one of those things that popped up was, um, was me. Oh my God. Green floating orbs over, uh, Tin Falls or wherever I, it was over. I remember it specifically because I was coming home from a friend of mine's house and it was over the like uh, Mammoth Regional. I know that you're very contentious with Mammoth, Re- Mammoth Regional. Like, calm down, relax yourself. Um, but that area, uh-huh. like the Tinton Falls Police Department area, okay. and there were floating green orbs and they were moving left and right, and then one went straight up into the air and then came down oh my God. and then went forward, and it was moving around, and then I saw another one. And then I immediately, while I was in the car, because uh, my best friend in the whole world, Dustin Orick, my my boy Sweet D, um, <laughs> original member of the, the creations of the night, but he's got a kid, and like he was going through a divorce, so he had to not do the podcast. Shit gets um, rough out there, man. It, it's hard out there for a pimp. So, uh, so I call Sweet D and I'm like, yo, are you <laughs> seeing what I'm seeing right now? Like, I know that I'm high as shit, but like, you're seeing this, right? And he goes, you talking about those floating orbs that are doing gymnastics in the sky above our head? Oh like, my God. Uh huh. That is precisely what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm telling, I'm talking to you about it right now. So we pull over to the side of the road, right? Right over that bridge when you're coming from Colts Neck into Tinton Falls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we stop and we look up and I'm like, dude, Nobody is going to fucking believe Did this. Did you videotape this shit? I would do phones were terrible. It was eight years ago, uh, Andrew. Right, true. Okay. But what, what, what was true. I going to, what am I going to use my no, MV2 I got you. that I have? I got you. <laughs> you your know, my, you're like- <laughs> my iPhone three, like, <laughs> I hear you. I could, I hear you. you couldn't even take a picture in the dark. Dude, there were you know? these, there were these, uh, it's funny too, because you really have to, when you find stuff online, you really have to bookmark it, catalog it, and hold on to it because mm-hmm. shit just dis a fucking peers. There's this video, this UFO video I found that I found a while ago. I don't know, it was in my history. And it was uh, Margate and Somerset. It was it was these different places in New in New Jersey, and these people were seeing these like it was like fire. It was like these weird, like f- it was it looked kind of like fireworks, but then they would like I don't know. It was really weird. It was a weird weird fucking video. Um, but I I just kind of ran up and I'm 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 like I'm always. I'm a, I try to be a skeptic. I try to look at things and say, oh, maybe it's a reflection of this and blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. Yeah, you have, to, you have to run through all plausible deniability before you can. You can't just be like, Sasquatch is real. You know <laughs> well, what I mean? Here, here you want to hear another story. I just opened my old phone, Epic Shouts, to my fucking, it was like a Samsung fucking Galaxy 5 or some shit. But I never had, it was, it was so good. Like, they make these phones with, like, glass backs now. Why do they do that? It breaks so easy. That old phone was just plastic. It lasts forever. Anyway, so I, I found my picture. I took a picture of a chupacabra in, um, in uh, what was it? In? It was in Deal. It was in that area by the train tracks, kind of. Um, and I have the pictures of it. It's the second weird crypto zoological creature. The other one I saw was sort of. See now we're talking. <laughs> fucking talk that shit. I I saw talk it that in, shit in Rumson uh when, a years ago, maybe ten years ago or 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 more. Um, eating a carcass. It was the it was a strange creature. And then this I saw more recently, but I, I took a picture of it and it was a hairless, weird looking dog like creature. Now. From yeah, the, well, the chupacabra is precisely that. It kind of looks like Gollum, right, from yeah. the Lord of the Rings series. But 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 people also say they're like, oh, but it, it kills stuff with its face. Well, it was like it, it. They also said it's it's probably a dog with mange, and I'm like, okay, so why is it so elusive? Why was it like not like you know hiding and and like I, I don't know. I was just like, what kind of dog could it be? And there's video online 
of people in New Jersey who fucking have have way better video than than I'm so pictures. glad that I'm getting drunk for this conversation. Just you know? keep talking. Well, it's just I like I fucking love you. you know, Leo, I love you too, but this conversation cannot happen when you're here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, he would sh he would sh he would shut it like, down. But, but why would why would they do that? Why? I don't understand. I don't They've understand why moving... what is a chupa? What does chupa copper even mean? There are no goats here. Yeah. Andrew, what do you mean? What are you talking about? We're not going to talk about this. So when they have yeah. A meeting of the minds here in Red Bank. Lately, just <laughs> shut up. We're going to talk about the goddamn chupacabra because this is totally local skeptics. Well, it's it's local, and it's these are things that I've seen locally. Because it so, happened in Rumson. Yeah, Rumson, and then this one was in Deal, and I have the picture, and I'm just like, what a what kind of dog is it? And 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 B, if this is a dog with mange, like what happens to it? Where's animal control talking about this shit? Like you don't see anybody talking about it, and then you see this weird hairless dog thing, you know? So I don't know. I'll just yeah. keep an open mind, you know? You're never gonna find me slipping being like, Oh, maybe it, you know, maybe it is a dog with mange, but maybe it's not a fucking dog with mange. You know what I'm saying? You ever see what a bear looks like when it's shaved? It yeah. kind of looks a little, if you had like a young adolescent bear that was shaved, it kind of looks like a chupacabra, but a dog. No, that's yeah. not what a dog looks like. I be I'd believe more. It was a fucking bear. I'd believe more. It was a fucking mangy polar bear than I would believe. It's just some random dog. And it dis it like it dis it was like, I don't know. It, it was, you know, it was crazy. It disappeared behind the bushes. Like, I, I went up to the train tracks to see where it went and it wasn't it wasn't there. Like I have a picture of it and then it was gone. You know what I mean? Like where did it where did it go? Where did it go? It could have got sucked up in the in <sighs> and these the portals, space. dude. Maybe. We're dealing with these interdimensional, you know shit's getting crazy. So Chris So Chris Wusky, my boyfriend, uh -huh. has a really great uh theory about why we went into Iraq the first time. Okay. And we went into Iraq the second time after 9-11 uh -huh. because it was it was Bush two, mm -hmm. right? Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> um, so he thinks that there is a like a portal uh -huh. in Iran okay. in Iraq, like where the Bible was written in that. And there is a Stargate that is an interdimensional pathway between here and wherever the fuck else. I love it. Um, so he thinks that there was a, the war on terror mm -hmm. air quotes was a fight for control of that Stargate and uh, Saddam Hussein kind of just stumbled into it because, <laughs> because that's like, he the epicenter that's the epicenter of humanity does he have any like right? historical basis for is this just oh he's like got a fucking myriad of, right, I love of information behind it um of which i cannot replicate because i just sit there and i smile and i love him <laughs> for it yeah um what i think obviously we got i'm not going to get into it, why we got into the war and why 9 11 happened because that is that's different this is yeah. we're talking about fun conspiracies and now we're about to turn into the American government. <laughs> Shit gets uh, dark, man. When you start going dude, those rabbit holes, you're like, oh, dude, fuck. dude. When you think about the fact that the the three heads of a a company that makes weapons were like not number one, but number two, three, and four in the American government, and then nine eleven happened, and then the company they used to work for was the main contractor for all of the weapons and tanks and jeeps that the American government then used oh, to shit. fund that 12 year war after dark, 9 11 it's getting murky and you're in like, here. Oh man, that is some <laughs> next level bullshit. And I, then people are just like, Oh, it, the fucking, the ones with the towels on their head, they did this and we're going to go into Iran and we're going to go to Iraq and fuck them. Cause I love America country music. And they're like, well, um, Pakistan, like they were like, 12 dudes from Pakistan that were actually, they used to work for the CIA, including Osama bin Laden. He was an, a CIA operative. Um, and then he just wasn't out of nowhere. Like they were just funding his, his fight against Mossad for years. And then they just decided he just up and decided that he didn't want to make millions of dollars. 
He was a rogue scholar that went dude, to what like, about that American dude? colleges. What about he spoke that dude? perfect English. What about that dude from fucking uh, was it MIT, Harvard? The guy that got arrested, the fucking he was taking money from like China, like 50 grand a month working on biological fucking bullshit. They also busted um, a Chinese. She turned out to, she said she was a college student, but she turned out to be like a Chinese fucking lieutenant or some shit in the Chinese army. Do you hear about this story at all? Yeah. Yeah, of course. So like and she was just like playing like underground type. She was just like, oh, I'm just I'm just regular old regular me. Yeah. And it's like, um, oh, you happen to be whatever a my name is. And then yeah. and then it, I forget what was it? Harvard or MIT it was one of them. Um, and, and like nobody talked about that. Like nobody talked about all that shit that went on. You know, yeah, why would they? Because they were probably getting upset about like Kobe Bryant dying or Dude, like, I was talking to my I was talking to my little bro today and I was just like he was getting all like upset about not upset but he was you know thinking about things and how things are going and I'm like look the powers that be will only let it get so shitty like they'll only let it get so shitty because they don't make any money if it's completely shitty if it's like Mad Max then they're not going to do good in Mad Max you know so like they only let it get a, a certain amount of shitty you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you got to understand that um, people made money Fuck yeah. through Auschwitz. Yeah. Like Fuck. somebody made millions of dollars during the time of internment camps. Yeah. Fucking. And and they have Hugo no. Boss okay. made those uniforms, you know, he was making Bro. money. Bro, like, okay, so you want to get like dark and topical? <laughs> no, I don't want to get um, dark and top. I'll get topical, but I mean, not I mean, that we can dark. get we can get dark and topical now. So <laughs> we can talk about how Bill Gates owns. Oh man, the, he. I owns, like how they do. Do you like how they they defunded the World Health Organization? I kind of am like, all right, I'm like, cool, sounds good to me. Yeah, bro. but like, you want to know why they did that? It's so that Bill Gates can step in and be like, hi. I have the vaccine. So he owns the vaccine already. Oh, man. For coronavirus. He owns the patent on the coronavirus. Not only that, for the last five years, he's been pumping ID 2020, which is a program where people get microchipped. Oh, man. And they use microchips to track you with face recognition, and they know where you are at all times, what you buy, what you do, do you like think, minority report. Do you They'll think do that straight up minority report shit with you? Do you that be bro? But he's the chair of a company where you're going to get microchipped and he Microsoft microchip, bro. He owns the patent on do you think and, he's fun at parties? Because I'm going to guess no, he's not. He I'm going to say a- no. He lives on the side of the mountain. He's actually Lex, <laughs> Lex Luthor. For people who read comics, he's Lex Luthor. He is number one bad guy. He doesn't have like, he needs a more sinister demeanor. But yeah, I guess it's the one you but never suspect. Look huh? into who he is as a person. Because in, in the 80s and in the early 90s, he was sinister as fuck. Yeah. And then Microsoft was like, we're going to release a computer. We're going to scrub the whole world of what he used to be. And then he's just he, going to be like, what did he do? Oh, before I'm funding he was a- like little African babies and stuff like that. When before the internet, he was a monster. Oh man. He was an absolute disgusting monster who stole from people. who stole their ideas. Oh yeah. Definitely Fucking, stole dude, ideas. He had people off. Like some of the most genius people that he ever worked for just died in a car accident. That shit what? gets crazy, dude. Dude, people just commit suicide you, when they're like do you geniuses. Think, do you think there'll be a certain point? Like, you know how they say UFOs like shut off nuclear weapons? Do you think there'll be a certain point where like some some lovely UFO civiliz- civilization will just come down and just be like, look, guys, just fucking cut it out? Uh, oh, you mean the Anunnaki that are going to come from the are they gonna Saturn be nice? time cube? Are they going to be? No, nice? I think that we're living in a simulation. And okay. I think that like, you know, when you play the Sims, mm-hmm. or, I mean, uh, Sim City, and you're just like, well, let's throw a tornado in there and see what happens. <laughs> see what happens I think, if I don't. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what's going on right now. I okay. think someone's getting super fucking bored with oh, this TV show that is the human race. And they're just like, ah, let's fucking let's fuck it up for a yeah, little bit. If you think about it, too, because like, say, OK, say it's a simulation. Say there's multiple dimensions. Say there's multiple worlds. Say we're doing. Uh, you know, we're living out these lives in multiple different ways and multiple different actions infinitesimally. Like, so it wouldn't really matter. I love one you. Of, <laughs> it wouldn't really. Thank you very much, Adam. I love you, too. Talk that what, shit. What? Kate. Like, do you think that it wouldn't even fucking matter? Like, whatever we do, 
if that was the case and people wanted to do that, would it matter? And it wouldn't really even matter if it was a simulation. I'm going to keep doing, I'm going to keep being me. Even if I'm simulated, I'm going to live my life how I'm going to live it. You know what I mean? So it's probably going to be boring as fuck, but I'm just going to live it the way I'm going to live it. Right. You're just going to keep trying to do what you can do until they force you to get a vaccine for the coronavirus no, then, um, so um, baseball games. They're going to do it. I'm telling you, they're going to do it. And within about, that vaccine inside of that vaccine is going to be the microchip with the nanotechnology <laughs> that Bill Gates is going to be able to fucking check what your blood like, type is. And then when some rich motherfucker needs type a blood needs my and a kidney, you're going to just have a fucking heart attack because it's going to be tied oh to your nervous God. system and your fucking brain's going to explode. And then no, they're going to harvest moving. your fucking organs so that they can keep the fucking Rothschilds Where would alive. You, like I was thinking, maybe, where did like, this fucking <laughs> podcast come from? Why? This is not this my is, podcast. This, I'm so sorry. This is totally local after dark. So anything goes. <laughs> My friend. <laughs> oh, it's fucking dark, baby. I look, <laughs> uh, this is not okay. This is what it's like to have a normal conversation with me in everyday life. This is not my podcast life. I'm so sorry, Andrew. You got me drunk. <laughs> I, um, I mean, I got bad. me drunk. I spent yeah. $40 in a financial crisis on a bottle of wine, and I'm pretty much yeah. drank the entire thing yeah. on your show. There you go, man. Perfect. I love it. So, I love that. Yeah, fucking dude, <sighs> you know. It's like you see those people out there and they, they think they, they, they like, you know, go into all these conspiracy theories and they start to go like nutty about it. And it's like, I don't want to go nutty about it. I'm you mean not... me? <laughs> I mean, you're not, you know, you're not, uh, you know, you're not, you're not boarding up your windows or anything just yet. So I think it's because good. I can't afford wood. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, I, I, I love to think of myself as a realist, which gives me permission yeah. to be kind of like a pessimist. But in actuality, I do think I'm an optimist because I, I, I think it's all I think it's really going to work out, man. In the end, I really do. I really do. So no matter no matter all this stuff, lizard people and Anunnaki. See, I have, I have a really I have a really weird balance of being the. Infinite optimist mm-hmm. that is like yoga himalayan pink salt lamps there you go hail shakes mm-hmm. like ohm Meditation. i want to be of service like all i want to do is like share my love of the world with the people that i love i just want to be of service like when you were like hey do you want to do a podcast i was like of course i do because i go. love you and i love your show and i just like if i have anything that i can bring I want to bring that. And it, even in like a microcosm, like an in, are you drinking tequila right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just sipping it. I'm just <laughs> sipping it, dude. <laughs> That's a good tequila. Uh, yeah, I have like a ton. I have a ton of, uh, I have a ton of booze in my house because I don't really. I'm not a I'm not a, like a hard liquor drinker, right? You know, and as you get well, older, that's why I'm drinking just, wine. So you know, well, I, I, you know, so I, I, it was in there, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna start to utilize what I have in the house. Fuck and, yeah! You know, there you it just go. Happen to be tequila, and I and I just you're waxing poetic, so I just a couple of my, couple of AP stouts and some yeah, tequila. I just sip it, you know. Salud, brother. There's something about cheers. There's something about like the stout and the tequila together. It really tastes good. Mm. And I just sip it. It's a nice little combo. Um I so I am I'm a balance between that guy and like chances are that there are seven foot reptilian humanoids that are pulling the strings on our entire government and the Rothschilds were Yeah, but why like, would they're like I... four thousand years old and they live underground. Why? So like I have a balance um yeah. that it's really, it's a really, really strange balance, but you, you start know. to, you start to read, you know, you start to read this stuff and you're just like, you know, then you get into like psyop and you're like, just like, what's going on? Is this like real? Or is this Bro, like Ted Bundy, real? Ted Bundy was a whole ass psyop dog. <laughs> he went to college. He went into a CIA program where they gave him like a hundred hits of acid, and then all of the sudden he became a homegrown terrorist. Oh, you're you, talking about Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. What did I say? You said Ted Bundy. I'm like, well, he was. Oh no, crazy. no, no, Ted Kaczynski. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, um, he, he, I was just thinking about how unhandsome he was in that fucking Zac Efron movie that they did on uh, Netflix. Yeah, he was years. charming. He was charming in that. You know. Yeah. 
Um, if he was but, that so charming Ted Kaczynski, to people. Ted Kaczynski sent mail bombs to people after spending his formative years like in a CIA program where they gave him balls, hallucinogenics. Yeah. yeah. And then they just like snapped their fingers and they were like 17 bologna sandwich upside down him. <laughs> and they were like, uh, 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 unicycle, unicycle. He was like, all right, I'm going to go mail the fucking governor a bomb. Like <laughs> Ming Ming brother Ming is, is just popped on and he was just like he was like they both killed people and I'm like yeah Ming dude Ted Bundy yeah. and Ted Kaczynski were taking right. people out thank you brother Ming oh man dude one love dude Ming I, I love Ming dude I, I, Great. I Ming dude I, I can't wait I to take Ming. this shit back into the studio like I really miss going into the studio and I I want to do like a late night show like this in a stu like in a studio dude, setting look. you know. That episode, uh, Sam PC 200 that we did That's was a crazy. late, it was a late night episode was quite possibly the most fun I've ever had podcasting. We got to like, do, we got to do that. But like, just bit like, I, I don't know what people, I don't know what people are going to do to get together, but like, there's bigger be, are yeah. do we had people from seven different States fly in for one show. I want, I want Ming to do like a, a Jersey you, do, uh, do podcast you, do, convention where it's like, but do you bigger. understand that we had, yeah, ten, it was legit. I walked ten in, I different I walked podcasts, in a secret fucking society dude, meeting, 10 no, different black. podcasts in one room. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was. Um, but I know. Um, oh, you were there. Yeah. Uh, Ming had that pool party last yeah, summer. Yeah, dude, that lady's dude. house was legit. Dude, that was so much fun, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I wish we I got, got hammered, and then we did a photo shoot immediately following that. And now <laughs> there's a picture. There's a picture of me on the rocks, like dude. the Little Mermaid <laughs> on the <laughs> rocks on the internet. Oh yeah, dude, it's great. Dude, yeah, you, you you guys were fucking. That was the first time I met you guys. You were fucking hilarious. Um, that house was balling. That 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 uh that woman does the fucking. She I forget what her. She does a podcast on there with Ming. I forget which one it is. If she's still doing it, or epic shouts. But I can't really fucking remember. Maybe maybe if Ming's still listening, he could point it out. But uh, the house was sweet. I would love to live. She lived in like she lived in those back wood. Is it Middletown? Is it Red Bank area? You don't know. Yeah, Dirt it's kind of like um. Like Highland, Billy, Middletown, Red Bank, Sink, yeah, like in, up in there, you know. Yeah, but it was a pretty. I, have you heard like the urban legends about all around there, like the white supremacists and like? Oh yeah, of course. So I've been, <laughs> I've been on that road. Yeah. Um, the all the rich white folks probably love that shit. They're like, yeah, oh yeah, like that you know, like, so, stay away. So I was in a band for many, many years out of high school. <laughs> What was the name of the band? Uh, the name of the band was Sadie May. Uh -huh. And um, the drummer for that band lived up in that area because his father is Max Weinberg. Oh, like, wow. The Max Weinberg. Wait, so did, Jay, did he play so the drums? He did. Okay. Uh, so tracks, Jay now tracks. plays Jay now plays drums for Slipknot. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Um, but a, his first band was my band. Nice. Uh, so we used to get fucking weird we would get like he was like 14 15 years old and we were all like out of high school so we were like dude like let's go in i had this disgusting awful pickup truck nice. it was a 1989 chevy silverado with dude, i extended, had a chevy s10 tahoe 88 dude dude when it i had the extended bed on it with with the with the 1980s <laughs> cover and like the the, the brim with the lights on it and shit yeah yeah, uh, yeah. so we would all pack into that and then we would drive down that road like that um yeah. whipper uh, that that weird new jersey whipper wheel road yeah. so we would get out of the car at night and we would just oh, be like yeah what's dude. up motherfucker like pretending to be black and then we would just hear a rustling in the trees and we're like oh no oh what's going on they're coming and then like we would look and then we would shine a flashlight and we would see eyes and we're like oh no we gotta get in the car and then go dude. so Dude, we were we were up in that area a lot, man. We would we would drive through it, me and my friends, and then we dare each other to shut the lights off, like shut your headlights off, so mm -hmm. it just be pitch fucking black, and you're like, ah! yeah, dude. So yeah. Jay lives like right up that in that area. Uh -huh. um, so there are no white supremacists if like fucking. Well, no, we would Jewish walk. Jewish families we would, living at the top. We of would the hill. walk. Yeah, well, that one, that one <laughs> Jewish family. They felt uh, safe. Did you ever get to ask Max? Like, is well, be also, weird out here, but Max? also, I mean, like, let's be real. It's not like my house where there's like, like, 
20 yards of driveway. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You drive a driveway, you go down uh, a hill and then you go around a corner and then around another corner. And then within this wooded area, you pass like the servant house and yeah. then you go to the house and then there's a barn oh. with like horses and shit dude, like people that. People love this area. John Stewart, fucking Max Weinberg, fucking Le- John, yeah, John Bon Jovi, fucking people dude, love yo, this area. Did I ever tell you? So this is the most totally local conversation <laughs> I've ever had. Um, That's what it's about. I was fucking hammered in Red Bank. Uh-huh. Hammered. Okay. And I'm coming around the corner in Red Bank. I'm walking down Main Street and I turn that right um to get to the parking lots by mm-hmm. uh Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And it's like ten no, it's gotta be later than that because I'm smashed. <laughs> Maybe eleven forty five, almost midnight, and I run bong smash my face into another human being and i'm like oh my god i am so so holy shit you're queen latifah <laughs> you ran into queen latifah physically ran into queen latifah How and my friends she? my dude i mean i might as well have hit a i might have she well big, have run right? into starbucks <laughs> yeah she looked like she was seven foot tall towering <laughs> over me knew her? i always have this fear of seeing immediately, somebody and, bro, and, and immediately. not knowing it's them she looked down at me and she was like, are you all right? And I was like, I'm so much better now. U-N-I-T-Y. Dude, I was like, dude, you and I T Y like, I get it. <laughs> and get she it was now. like, thank you so much. I was like, I love you. Like, I love you. Like, you're amazing. Like you've done so much <laughs> for say? like black women and for you music. And she was, she was just walking down the street, just oh, like man. going to get a fucking scone or whatever the fuck. <laughs> and, and I was like, holy shit you're queen latina and like it didn't fucking click and then she was just like yeah i am and i was like i fucking love you and i was like yo you and ity like that was the shit and then she just put up the fist and i was like all right i'm invited to every cookout ever oh man like wow i was like i get it and i was like i'm yelling across the street i'm like yo that's queen latifah <laughs> I'm sure were, she like, appreciated my, all that. of my friends all of my friends were like, oh, shit, what up, queen? What up, girl? And she just did the fist like higher. And oh, then we man. just fucking get. But that is like. That's respect right there. Dude, I was like, holy shit. So if you go to the Freehold Mall and you go to the Apple store, I want to say I've been there five times in the last couple of years. Two out of those times I've seen Jon Stewart. Really? Just chilling. Did he just have a fucked up computer or what? No, his daughter. He's got kids. Oh. So his daughter was getting a there new iPhone. That's my goals. You know, I'm so scared to make this list, but I need to make like totally local celebrity list. Like who would I want? Top five. Yeah. You know, John yeah. Stewart would definitely fucking be on there, yeah. you know, but Dude, I'm like, he looked tired. He looked so tired. And I walked by him and I was just like, a couple. Dude, he's got a couple, but he Girl. runs a he runs like a dog sh- sanctuary. I thought it, yeah, he his, like his his wife. He like rescues dogs, him mm-hmm. and his wife, and they There's have like, like a horses farm. and shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're like huge animal lovers. But I was walking into the Apple Store to get the computer that we're on right now mm-hmm. um, fixed. Perfect. And I looked at him and I went, I did a double take, <laughs> and he went, Oh no, please don't! And I just went like this, and he was like. <laughs> thank you thank you for not fucking doing anything yeah. and i was just like i fucking i yeah. was like that's what they want dude they don't you. want i gotta go people don't yeah. want you to blow up their spot at all no. you know and no because that place you've been and to the respect, apple store dude. it's fucking crushed well if you're at all times if you're like yeah and you're in jersey like you're living in jersey it's like man you know it's funny because like bruce springsteen moved away and then he moved back which has really got to tell you something about the area like you probably just felt I would imagine more comfortable around here than he did out there. Although the weather is killer. The weather would make <laughs> me move out there, you know, weather and money. Both hey man, I'm things. talking about, I'm talking about moving down to Florida right now. Ah, oh, the weather's so warm, man. Yeah, dude. I mean, I have a place to stay in Tampa. There's Ooh. a pizza restaurant that is like, Hey, the second you come down here, like you could be our head chef. Like, oh, you, could, sh- like you got it, man. And Chris Watsky is like, Hey man, like I just bought a brand new house. It's got a jacuzzi. He's down like, in Tampa. Can, yeah, he's Fuck like it. you can you can just come and hang out here until you get enough money to get it's, your own place. It's nice. It's nice. You know, it's I nice. could literally pick up right now and go if I wanted to, but I'm, I'm too. I'm too fucking I'm, local, man. I I'm lived. I moved away for fucking, ten years, and then I moved back, and I'm just like, it's not. 
it's just it's not different. The, yeah, it's just it's not just the different. same. People are just, and, yep. and it's not bad. You know, it's not like it's just it was just different is all yeah. you know and that's i moved exactly back it. here and i don't care it's like i don't fit in around here but i do fit in like like people are people are strange you fit in where you fit in that's yeah. the thing about new jersey yeah. is that like everyone feels like they don't fit in until they find the people that they fit in with and then you're like where what where have i been yeah exactly you know like when you and i when when your show and my show met yeah we're like well, like we'll walk around a place and just be like, I don't know anybody here. And then they'll be like, uh, it'll be like, Random. like a, like a food truck show yeah. at, at Monmouth park. And all of a sudden you're just like kind of out of place. And then you're like, Oh, Hey, there's, there's Andrew and Leo. <laughs> oh shit. What's up guys. Dude, respect, How the fuck are man. you? And then like, you know, you're like, Oh, did you get the Zeppelins? Did you do this? Did you do that? You just got to fit in where you fit in, dude, man. Dude, Leo, Leo's been like, dude, I, I miss Leo, man. He did he did one, he did a Friday night show, but he he hasn't been he hasn't been doing the shows. I just don't know if he <sighs> doesn't feel like doing it or Yeah, I mean, we didn't do we didn't do uh Sam PC this week and it's all because of Bobby Moore. So <sighs> You know, it's it's rough. Sometimes. I'm not going to say that Bobby Moore and Leo have a <laughs> lot in common <laughs> other than yeah. like facial features <laughs> you know what i mean and I i'm thought it not would be, gonna say I, I don't know if this is wrong or not but i thought it'd be really funny if like if if like our podcast if one day we like we did like an april fools where we just switched and we just switched <laughs> yeah. see if anybody yeah. fucking noticed that'd be know? great it would be <laughs> you and bobby moore talking about rap and him trying to get you fucked up <laughs> getting you high as shit so that you can rap. And then me and Leo, like discussing the intricacies of like the, the railroad stations throughout <laughs> New Jersey. You know what I mean? Or like yeah, seriously. what Dude. flavor profiles he's like, Oh, so, you know, if you go to this restaurant, what kind of, Oh, do you think that you would look for umame there? I'm like, uh, <laughs> yes, I guess fucking shit. Come on. Yeah, that's a great idea. But, well, there you well, go. No, you know, here's the thing. I need Hennessy Leo. <laughs> Dude, he, 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 I always get, you know, you, 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 you're playing with fire, you know, like it's like, that's what we do on San PC, dog. We play with fire. You've well, been here. Oh, yeah. You got us faded. You got me like really, I was pretty faded. And then fucking Bobby dips, dude. He's just like, oh, let's do this and that. And he fucking uh -huh. dips. And that is, like, that is knew, classic Bobby Moore. Well, well, that's when I knew. I'm like, I know you now. Like, I know that's all. Like, classic. I had to see the whole night. And then to that's see a, that, like, I, I love and respect Bobby you, Moore. but I know you now, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I feel you on that. And then as far uh -huh. as like, as far as Leo. Bro, I, he got. On my birthday party, he got fourteen people fucked up. <laughs> fourteen, and then was just like, up on? "Dude, he was just like, yo, I brought cookies and brownies, and I gotta be careful. Yo, with I that brought shit. three bottles of Jameson. Like, it's a party, and I was like, yeah, it's my birthday. Don't worry about it. Bobby's just doing his Bobby thing. Everyone was. Gone. So I'm getting, I'm getting, like, I'm keeping up with Bobby and my friends." They are used to keeping up with me, so they're like, "Okay, yeah, 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 yeah." And Bobby's like, "I lied about how powerful the cookies were," <laughs> and then and left, then and then left, <laughs> literally left everyone on Neptune. Oh man! And everyone was like, "I, I don't know if I can get home." And I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, "Bobby Moore, they're all trapped at your house, That's dude." Fucking and he was right like, there. "I'll see you later." Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> "That's some bullshit." I can't even Uber out of here because no, this is my there. place. Yeah. <laughs> You're there. Dude, I, I fucking left my car at your house that night too. Like yeah. fucking Leo gave me a ride home. Welcome to San PC, baby. I would have I would have totally done it too. Somebody talked me out of it and I was just like, I could do this. Because like yeah. you know, whatever. You have you to. Know? We have to. Yeah. 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 Well, we got food that night and we were feeling it, and then we had a couple more drinks after that. That's uh, what it's about, man. And stuff like that needs to happen more in our community. Like yeah. in the podcast community. Um and the and I think Ming actually, brother Ming is a huge part of that. Oh yeah, um, because I mean he he's brought so many of us together. Like me, like okay, so me and Bobby Moore, Angelo Gingerelli, Angelo's um, the man, dude, I fucking love Angelo. Um, the call in the shots guys, the call in the shots guys, and and us, we got together. I forget how it happened, but we met Ming through them, mm -hmm. and then. Angelo Gingerelli hit us up because we did call in the shots. Mm -hmm. 
So obviously Taylor and I fell in love with each other uh-huh, immediately. Yeah. Who doesn't love Taylor, uh, dude? Because we're the same person. <laughs> Taylor and I were like, oh my God, you're also a savage? <laughs> like, great. Like, let's do savage stuff. <laughs> and then Steve and Bobby fell in love because they're both like dorks about sports. So we're just like, you guys keep, keep talking. Uh-huh. Um, so then we met Ming. So then through Ming, we met you guys. Yeah. We met Angelo. We met like everyone that's in that local, that um, a shared universe studio click ethos, that yeah. little click right there. We met all those guys. And then turns out that like people think that we're like a, a to do <laughs> locally. Yeah. Uh, so they're like, oh, you guys have been doing this for four years. Like I've seen your show and I do this and I do that. Like, can we do this? And I'm like. I guess. Yeah, it gives you clout, a, dude. People are like, just I'm like, just, All right. I'm just a fucking pizza guy. Like, I want to do this. Is what I, I want to see. If, like Ming, uh, he he just got that new studio set up on the on the upper floor. We just saw it, and I'm so like, so good, dude. But this is what I want to do. So, I don't want to. I'm so, okay. I'm sorry. Real, I don't mean to cut you off, but I I donated a bunch of stuff from my old studio to uh-huh. him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because nice. uh, it's n- it's not my studio anymore. Um, you're looking at my studio. It's in my foyer, in my mm-hmm. library. My I have many antiquities <laughs> and uh, leather bound books behind me. Um, but I am so proud to have like posters and little toys and stuff. Like you, you saw my old podcast studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, some of that stuff is up in that studio, okay. and Dude, I'm so fucking proud of that. I'm I sorry. Go on. Do I want to do? I don't know. Like I don't like because it's Ming's studio, so I don't want to assume shit because Ming is. Super I mean, look. Cool. Here's the thing. What? He's got two rooms. Yeah, we well, can take well, up one of them. Well, what I want to do is I want to do I want to do a late night show like this, but like have a like a like a desk like a late night show set up with a desk and stuff do that in that intro room when you first walk into the office and then i want to have like oh we did the tour together i remember that yeah yeah, yeah. i want to do like a green in the rest of it i just want it to be green room where i just invite all of my favorite local people over and like you know whatever we'll have a lineup of guests on the show but everybody will just be partying in the back of it you know but I don't want to like be like, hey Ming, I want to throw a big party at your at your place. No, we're gonna throw it, Ming. I know that you're listening. <laughs> uh, we're gonna throw a huge party, and then we're, what we're not gonna do is go on that roof. Oh man, I was I, I got really close to the edge because I'm I'm that like whatever dude, we it were is, all standing there. I was like, I've got I was a picture. Like, oh man, dude, yeah, I yeah. can send you the picture. Leo took a picture of all of us just standing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really I don't know. It's a cool i don't know it's a cool scene it was a lot man so i i was really digging ming ming was supposed to have the boardwalk studio till till march and then he, but he just does got it now that. right yeah, well no everything's fucking you know i was supposed to do a podcast there and then like as all the shit was going on uh somebody called me back and was just like yeah we probably shouldn't do it i'm like yeah all right fine you're right and i mean we could have done this there i wouldn't have given a fuck i know i but don't like, care dude look <sighs> I mean, I, I I'm don't like, wanna, I don't wanna... I'm like an old school libertarian. I don't want people to tell me what to do when I can do it. I don't want to know. I don't want to know what someone thinks I should wear. I don't want to give up my guns. I don't want to. I don't want people to tell gay people that they can't get married. I don't want you to tell me that I can't get weed. It's my body. I'll put in or take out whatever the fuck I want, whenever the fuck I want. Fuck okay. Yeah. I'm not wearing a mask. I'm not wearing uh, a, wear a mask all on my fucking coat. I'm not wearing a different colored shirt. Go fuck yourself. Okay. This is America, <laughs> Jack. Okay. I got the goddamn constitution. I don't want to. I was germs. fucking born under. You can't fucking tell me shit. All so right. if you want to go to the Respect. fucking, uh, another shared, a, a shared universe podcast studio. I will fucking be there. Respect. Okay, respect. I'm glad that we're doing it here because I can get fucked up and then yeah. just kind of roll. This is a whole over. new. This is a whole new era because like shit ain't gonna be the same anymore. Like no, after this moment, absolutely not. But because you know what? Also, like it is a lot. Fucking. I don't think it's as cool, and I'd like to vibe on people getting in in like face to face. But it's super easy to do this shit with Zoom, and you pop on, and boom, boom, boom. We fucking do it, and then you just go to fucking bed. You know. So I don't want to be like, right. you know, there's something about me that's traditionalist, but then there's another part of me where I'm just like, huh, this is pretty nice and convenient, you know? Yeah, it's super convenient, but also like it is our American freedom to do whatever the fuck we want whenever the fuck we want to do it because 1776 was a fucking thing. Yeah. Okay. Come and take my fucking guns. Come and tell me 
who I can and cannot fucking marry. Go fuck yourself. I don't give a friggity flying fuck about what the American government thinks I can and cannot do because motherfuckers got lost in the sauce. Wow. Okay. Last time I checked, I am allowed to defend my weed plants and my gay marriage with my fucking guns. Yeah. Fuck you. I'm not wearing a different colored shirt. I'm not putting shit on. I'm not taking shit off. I, this is America, Jack. And if you don't fucking like it, move to Canada. Go yeah. fuck yourself. What okay? do you think would, this, be, would be a good runner up, though? Like, you're not in the United States. Where's the next Canada? Country? Okay. But Canada's you know what they cold. have in Canada? Freedom. Yeah. What about Mexico? I'll take cold. I'm, I'm okay with Mexico as long as I'm not in a place where the cartels are. I know this dude that's living down there right now, and he's chilling, dude. He's straight up like, you know, warm. dude. I have, I know so many Mexican people from working in the restaurant industry. How are they doing, dude? How are the they're, Mexican people's doing? They're fucking thriving, bro. All right, well, they always have been thriving. So I just sent you the picture of yeah, I just got it. It's the a, picture of the it. three of us standing on the edge of the fucking you know, world. You know what? You know what, Adam? You know what it is like. You know what I dig about people. I dig about you. Is like I meet people. I don't care where they stand on anything as long as they're enthusiastic. And Adam, you're an enthusiastic individual. And like when uh -huh. I'm like, hey, do you want to do a podcast? And you're like, fuck yeah, I want to do a podcast. Of you course know, when, I do. When I, when I ask Leo, I'm like, hey, do you want to do this? Blah, blah, blah. He's like, meh. And I'm like, dude. Well, it's because he is obligated to do it with you. Yeah, he doesn't have like that's the thing, though. I just I've just been doing them like I'm like, yeah. right, fuck it. You don't have to do it. Well, see, so here's here's my thing. Mm. And this gets back to me being half woo, half fucking crazy person. Mm -hmm. I love you. Thank like you. we've met a, n a number of times. Number of times. We have a lot in common. I love you. I love your show. I listen to it all the time. Thank you. you are a friend of mine. If I were to see you pulled on the side of the road with a white flag, mm. like, hey, I need some help. I, I would pull over. Right. I appreciate that. So. I just want to be that's that's all this is. I I want to be of service cool. to the people that I care about. Well, Leo so does I've not spent, share that same vision with you. I've spent many 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 years being super selfish. Mm -hmm. I cared about number 1. Yeah. And I wasn't even number 1 in my own eyes. Mm. Preach. I cared about me and what I would get out of this. Mm. I don't want to be that person anymore. Mm. -mm. Epic shouts to the um, mic arm, dude. You're the only one that yeah. gets it. You're the only one yeah. that gets it. You're the only one that I talked to with a mic arm. I am. Oh, this is a whole ass stand, doggy. <laughs> you know what I mean? You see this? You see this fucking stand I got? There you, go. you see that? There you go. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is my makeshift podcast studio. I love it. So, um, I want to be of service to the people I care about. I love you. I love Leo. I love Ming. I love all of the people like I'm trying to cultivate like a tribe around me of people that want to be of service, people that care about the people that are around them and are willing to do whatever for them, because that's what is important. I think that the more you put out into the world, the more you will get back. And that is not something that I I really fucked with until maybe a year ago. Mm -hmm. And it's always like you hear like Namdi chakra guys that are like, Oh, like whatever you put out is what you give any like, yeah, <laughs> fuck you hippie. Who cares? Put this out. Yeah. Put, put my fucking beautiful <laughs> dick pic out, bitch. Shut up. Look at this American, uh, 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 you know, and I am that I'm that guy. That's great. I but really when you, when you get down to brass tacks, like I am in love with life. Mm -hmm. I want to be in love with the situations I put myself in. I only want to do the stuff that I want to do and I don't want to do anything else. And it sounds super simple. Um, but I, I reached that point through um, meditation and through meditation is a shit, man. Dude, it's so good. But I, I hit that point through a um, like a psychedelic journey. Mm -hmm. nice. And I realized I realized that I have so much more to give. 
Fuck yeah, man. You know what I mean? And yeah. I don't want to take. I never want to take more than I give. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it sounds super woo woo. And it's super like, I'm there with you, oh, man. you should do this and do that and meditate fucking, and fucking yoga and, and don't wear shoes so you can touch the grass. Fuck yeah. Like, that's all fucking important. I ionize that shit, bro. If you are, if you truly love the people that you communicate with, you'll do anything for them. If you were to call me tonight mm-hmm. and be like, Dude, I accidentally ran someone over. I need help. <laughs> I need help. Good I'm like, bro, style. We gotta get bro, I got body. two shovels and a fucking gun. I'll be oh, there. Oh, perfect. Don't worry about it. Perfect. And then you and I, you know, figure it out. So look, I, I, I want to do whatever, something. but whatever it is, I want to be making, how of do we, service. Let's make America pizza again. How do we get you making pizzas? Like, what do, who do we have to like? What do you need? You need an oven. Can we get to the I oven? I just need an oven. Can we get to the Corbo? Because I have pizza dough in my just, oven because I've been making it because I'm bored. Is the core is is like the whole Corbo and Sons, is it like the whole building is just off limits? The entire building is quarantined off. <sighs> so I have we need I have to an ID an to get oven. in. We need I have to, an ID to get in. But we don't want you to but, break any laws. There's gotta be places that are that have ovens that are open. We gotta get you making pizzas. Mm, 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 mm. So I would rather use my home oven mm. than use some bullshit ass pizza oven so how okay. could you make because if you're not coming with a forza forney oven could, could you make a get legit, the fuck out of my could face you, could you fuck around and make a legit pizza out of your oven like can i eat a pizza out yeah. of your oven it would be like like the bomb of course of course i can Dude, we gotta get I'm, you like i'm the fucking greatest we gotta i am the second best pizza gotta, i own in new jersey we gotta get straight you, up we gotta get and you if making, anyone wants to fucking come and challenge me and you're not dan from raza then come fucking check this so how do we get you making we gotta get you making pizzas and delivering pizzas man I cannot deliver the pizzas, but I will make the pizzas if someone wants to deliver them. So wait a second. Could we like stop by and pick up the pizzas? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. We got to get on this. Do you have any boxes? We need something to put the pizzas in. You know in. where I live. We need boxes for the pizzas. I got Tupperware. No. We Bring your like, own Tupperware. We need to figure out. We got to get. Is there? Does Corbo have boxes? Could we break into Corbo and take their boxes? I don't know that we can even get within a hundred feet of the bell works you building know what i used to do before it was the bell works building. i'm drinking straight out of the bottle now andrew i'm just like i'm not fucking around by the way if anyone likes uh orange wines that are skin contact and got a lot of really good minerality a little dry um in a de vida by lacenda uh diego losonata is quite possibly my favorite wine that has ever existed it's damn existed it is a spanish white um we gotta we gotta get you out there making like making pizzas talking about wine i mean there's only 382 bottles of this wine that was made and i've probably bought i want to say 75 does of it them. taste orangey or no no it, it tastes super super light uh very crisp a little dry i don't like that extra extra like feeling you no, get that's after that, drinking that's like that, that shitty red wine shit yeah, that's when like you're that. drinking like light foot or whatever the fuck does is there certain wines that give you headaches and then certain wines that don't give you sometimes headaches? yeah red wine gives me headaches so it's i white. just drink you white just wine because it's delicious is, you know my, my my pops my dad used to make uh he used to make wine with his his partner uh, he had this uh, I- Italian uh, partner, this con- construction aggressive, <laughs> and and they would make their own wine. And my family, like I learned later on, would call the white. They called it white lightning because it would get you like. Fuck. Oh, that's that. That's that fucking. Um, they did. Moon, that's moonshine. Yeah, they made it so that you just fucking like just it was just heavy. You know what I mean? So I, I like, you know, I, I don't know, I never really mastered it, but I love to drink certain things, not get like too shitty, but then just be I'll able tell you to what, like, you know, my cousins make morning. moonshine every year for Christmas. Nice. And it's fucking awesome. You can't it's like. so good. They make apple, they like apple pie fucking moonshine and they just mix a fuck ton of alcohol with apples and cinnamon. And then they give you like a little cinnamon stick. And then when you're done drinking the moonshine, you chew on the cinnamon stick and then you go to fucking outer space. How many like how many like how much can you dr- like how much of this can you drink? Though? I mean, three shots and you're fucked. I couldn't. I'm such a li- you're I'm a, fucked, I, dude. dude. It took me so long to realize that I am all around a lightweight with everything with 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 herb, with drinking like 
I can only drink. I can only, I could smoke a lot, but what's going to happen is I'm just going to fall the fuck out. Like I'm just going to fall asleep. Like I just get super tired. So you got to like, you know, I got to pace myself basically, you know? Right. So if that right, was the case, course. I've had a lot of fun nights. Clearly, I don't know what that means because I just crushed an entire bottle during your podcast. I, I, I have a lot of, like, I've had a lot of fun, but, like, I've blacked out and I don't remember. Like, people have been like, oh, we hung out, Atlantic City, this happened, that happened. I'm like, dude, don't, don't even talk that. to me about Atlantic City. You know that I lived in Atlantic City for fucking two years? Oh, my God. Did you live, like, I lived, the boardwalk? No, I lived in room 448, the suite at the top level at Harrah's Casino what? and Bar. How'd you I get lived that there for, shit? I lived there for two years. Shut up, man. I, pro- I promise you. Why were they letting you in there? So my one of my best friends, mm-hmm. Salsano, his uncle is a high roller. He's part of the Seven mm. Star Club. Seven Star is higher than gold member, platinum member. It's higher than everything. He's a big gambler. It's like, that is Frank Sinatra level. Shark skin suits. Dude, that is, he Do shows up in sweat. Cuts. Bro, he shows up in sweatpants and a and shitty sweatpants? t-shirt with holes in it, and he just throws thousands down. Bonk, bonk, What's bonk, his game? Bonk, bonk. He plays video poker like a motherfucker. Wow, that's very Dude, specific. So, quick story about Uncle Bob, the, <laughs> yeah. the high, the high rolling motherfucker. Wait, quick story about Uncle Bob, and then you got to get back into how you ended up in a in a hotel penthouse. Well, no, 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 years. Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob is the guy who facilitated this hotel. Oh, okay, all right. So, Uncle Bob and and. There was the three of us, me, Sweet D, pre, uh, aforementioned Sweet D, and Adam Salsano, other Adam, uh-huh. my my boy. Um, his uncle, we met up with him. He was like, I'm right outside the Seven Star Club. I'm in the Platinum Club. I'm playing video poker. We're like, okay. So he's got a, a cast about three quarters of the way up his leg, right? He broke his ankle. Sure. Of course. So he's got it resting up like a fucking animal, right? So it's kicked up over here. Right. And he goes, all right, boys, come, come through and say, what's up? We're like, okay, we'll come say hi. So he is working on two video poker, um, machines at the same time. Fun, man. How is it in between putting in a hundred, putting in a hundred, putting in a hundred, putting in a hundred. Oh my God. Pushing buttons, pushing buttons, pushing buttons, pushing buttons. We watched him go through $700 like this. Didn't make a dime. Dude, like this, right? And he goes, "That's fucking bullshit, ass machines, <laughs> whatever." Blah blah blah. He goes, ah, "Come here, come here, yeah, Johnny Walker." Right? Turns around and he goes, "Fuck it!" Boop 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 boop. Hits three buttons, right? Uh huh. Hits twenty thousand dollars, and he goes, "And now we're talking." <laughs> and then he looks at us and he goes. Here's four thousand dollars. Go have a good night. Oh my god! And handed us four thousand dollars in cash, what? and goes, "Get the fuck out of here. I'll see you later." Oh. He goes, "You guys, uh, go get fucked up in the Seven Star Club. Oh. Let them know I, I let let What's you the in there. Seven Star Club. Like, so dude? the Seven Star Club is this super quiet, very very quaint. They check your ID three times before you even walk up to the door. So it's not like a bunch of hoes. It's like no. It's dis- no, 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 no. This is gentlemen. all super high baller, bad motherfucker. Number one guys. Wow. So there was a period of time where we were so frequent in the seven star club. Mm-hmm. So Adam Salsano and I walked in and there was this Russian, um, uh, I guess she was like a doorkeeper. Uh She was like the person who sat everyone down. We walked in and she goes, Adams, how are you? (laughs) And that has been like a never ending joke between the two of us. So we were just like, Hey girl, what up? And then we just went and we sat at the bar. You literally, you didn't pay for the alcohol or the food that you consumed. You just tipped. Yeah. So we would just over tip like a motherfucker. Oh so we would be like, hey, can we get a, jo- a bottle of Johnny Blue and a jo- and a bottle of Louis the 13th? And then we would just put one of the hundreds down and we would just drink and be like, yo, let me get like three cheese steaks and a fucking cheese platter. Oh, my God. That sounds we would, awesome. We would get real fucked up. Why and would you ever leave out. there? I would stay there forever, bro, dude. Bro. So you remember when the market crashed uh-huh. in like 2010, 2011? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when we were there. <laughs> we weren't even spending our own money. Oh, my God, bro. We were spending the American government's money on getting fucked up and tipping these Russian fucking mail order brides that were at 
the seven star club at Harris. Any of them? Of course, dude. Did it ever work? Of course it did. We were in the seven star club and we were walking around like we had That's fucking great. fat dicks. That's awesome. We're like, look at this. Look at my whole ass dick. Check this. <laughs> so we're getting fucking great. hammered on alcohol we can never afford. Right. We're drinking Johnny Blue, Louis the 13th, like the best Jameson that you got. They're like, oh, we just got a we just got a case of Jameson from Ireland. It just came in today. Let, like, well, let's get three bottles. Here's seventy five dollars. <laughs> they're like okay great here you go so we would take that we would drink we we're drinking fucking everything dude so then we would go to the pool club mm -hmm. get fucking hammered we would invite our friends that are drug dealers they would roll up and be like come on we're gonna get you fucked up you get us fucked up dude we were living in a suite yeah, in when, atlantic city so where where did it all what what made you leave uh what made you leave uh, it gets really fucking boring really fucking quick i promise you <laughs> Um, and All it was it was like Russian who is it? Fucking it's the same thing as the quarantine. Just pussy, like, pussy, pussy. In your bro, face. It, you know what? You know when it hit me? Mm. It was a Tuesday morning. Mm. So we lived in Atlantic City from Thursday afternoon until Tuesday at four. Mm -hmm. And then we would come home and like live at home. Yeah. Right for like a couple of days just to like recalibrate and like yeah, yeah. get our shit together. Some of us may or may not have worked under the table at the uh -huh. time. Um, working in the restaurant industry. Shout out to those guys that did that. <laughs> Shout out to um, those guys out there. You know who you are. You know who you are. You know what you did. Um, <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly, there's no witnesses. So it came out to be like 9 a.m. on a Tuesday. Uh -huh. We're at a strip club. And okay. we're doing blow off of a girl's ass. <laughs> okay. And I, and I looked up and I was like, dude, I got to get my fucking shit together. <laughs> <laughs> That'll I do can't it. do this anymore. That'll I'm do 28. It. God damn it. Like That'll I got to fucking, it. I'm about to be 30. I got to yep. figure this shit out. That's when um, I, that's when I packed my shit up and moved back to Jersey. I was just like, I can't keep doing this. I got to do something. I think some people get restless, they get bored, and other people don't. They're just like, all right, this is this is what it is. Yeah, you know? that complacency kills the yeah. human psyche, dude. I never had like, that. I never had that opportunity for somebody to come along and offer me something and be like, all right, this is this is some bullshit. Here's a pension and some bullshit, and you just do this, and you're you're good to go. Like nobody's right. ever offered that. And I'm me. I'm glad that that never happened. I had the opportunity. Like I worked in. And I, I've told this story like a thousand times um, mm -hmm. to you, um, probably every podcast that we've done. But I worked in like at a desk job. I worked in the corporate world and I wore a suit and tie and I wore khakis and I sat in a fucking cubicle and I punched numbers into a computer and I fucking hated it. <laughs> I wanted to kill myself. Yeah. Like Your legit. Brain. I actually I actually wanted to die because the thought of not being on this planet and disappointing Every person, like my mother, who has been fighting cancer since I was 30, I mean, since I was 13, wow. and I am now 34, Whoa. she's been fighting cancer my entire life, Jesus. okay, basically, oh, right? The thought of disappointing her and me killing myself was a better idea than me working and in data entry bullshit like a fucking data input fucking i worked at a fucking, at fucking I worked direct at a, tv i worked at a bro. telemarketing company it was through this this university and they're like we don't call it that i'm like yeah but that's what it is but that's exactly what it is like oh man I, it is fucking just a soul it's killer. fucking brutal man and like some people the second it, i got out of that and everything was dangerous again oh yeah and everything hurt just a little bit yeah and i was like oh i might die i might i might have a little freak out here yeah that's what fucking life is about and if you don't fucking embrace that if you don't embrace you that adversity no now dude we're that in the, fucking we're in the craziness shit right now my friend dude, i cannot fucking stress this enough we're in the do shit. what you fucking love because nobody fucking cares about you yeah not a fucking person in your life yeah. cares about do what, what you you're feel. doing yeah just do it just do it just fucking do exactly dude and i i've told this story a couple of times um but i had a psychedelic 
uh, experience mm-hmm. where I was speaking to geometric interdimensional beings. Okay. And their, their message to me was do what you want all of the time and do not do what you don't want any of the time. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. And they were like, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Don't you want to do what you want to do all of the time? And I'm like, yeah. They were like, well, figure out what you fucking want to do. And I was all like, the time. okay. And they were like, and then just do that all the time. And I was like, that seems like way too simple. They were like, huh? Fucking buy nerd. <laughs> and I didn't get it. I yeah. didn't understand it until I started while. doing what I wanted to do. And I was like, start moving and grooving. I was like, oh, shit. Like, all I want to do is be the number one pizza guy. Like, I just want to make so pizza. What is that? How does that affect you, like, psychically now? Like, you're, you're, you're in a position now in your mind. You're seeing reality cast out all around you. And it's like, pizza? Well, we're going to make it difficult for you to make pizza. Like, what do you think that That's all fine. Means, That's not going to stop me from making pizza. I'm okay. still going to be the best. Right. I'm still here to be... I mean, in New Jersey, I have to be the number two because Raza is still a thing. And Dan Ricker is. Where's that place at? It's in Hoboken, um, Jersey City. OK. Um, he. OK, so Dan, Dan's got a cheat code. Dan he has been in the pizza. So he has been within the top 10 bakers on the planet ah. for the last 20 years. So you don't know how to bake. And then te- I do, but not like him. Uh huh. Um, and he's only been making pizza for ten years, and he's the number one pizza pizzaiole in the country. Do you do you fuck with that dude? Do you talk to him, or you ever hit? I him up? talk to him. I frequently. You like? Like he lives. That pizza? He lives in Middletown and oh. comes to my pizzeria enough where I'm like, "Hey, chef, how are you? Like, do you have any tips and hints?" He taught me how to use my oven the proper way. Nice. Um, I am I am a literal sponge See, when I talk to that guy. That's like that's like the stars lining up. Like you are supposed to make pizza. Like you know the I mean, pizzioli guy from New like the guy, the guy, the guy, the you fucking the guy. guy. Isn't that weird how like these synchronicities happen where you're like doing something and then you meet the guy, the guy, the guy, you know? So so there is an old Buddhist teaching that says when you are ready to learn the lesson the teacher will appear. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Yeah. Um, but when you are ready to learn, your teacher shall appear. Nice. And I feel, I feel that way about Richard Corbo, my head chef, rich. He and I got together at a time where he needed a pizza guy and I needed a teacher. Yeah. And I am a, you know me, I'm a fucking savage. I'm going to put whatever the fuck I want. And he's like, I went to culinary school in Italy. I have Michelin stars. Like I am a bad motherfucker. You there's four ingredients that go on a fucking pizza, tomatoes, cheese, salt, and oil. And that's it. And I'm like, but what about roasted pork and fucking pineapple? What's up motherfucker? Mm -hmm. So he and I got together and we created what has now become Corbo and Sons. Yeah. We are we are too infinitely distant. What's he doing now, man? What's he doing? Opposite is he chilling? ends of the spectrum. He what well so what Bell Market is so if you don't know, I work in an in international food hall. So my head chefs and my sous chefs are what they're doing right now is they're providing food for local workers. Oh, uh, okay. Um, Bell Market as a whole, not just Corbo and Sons, but uh, Josu and Broad Fork and Bubs Deli and um, everyone within our food hall, uh, Honey Bell Coffee and Bakery as well. Um, I forgot. I don't know why I forgot that one, but uh, I'm fucking retarded. I don't know what to tell you. Andrew. <laughs> I'm fucking drunk. So fuck you. Nobody cares about fucking Honey Bell. I mean, I love Honey Bell. And I get my coffee there every day when I'm there. Some, but I want some fucking pastries, dude. Shout out to Alexis. She's a fucking savage. She's mm. so good at fucking ba- at pastries. It's nuts. Dude. It's fucking bananas how good she is. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. So uh, Bell Market 
if you guys don't know, is within uh, Bell Works, the building in Homedale. Yeah, okay, I mean, if you if you don't know and you haven't been there, you gotta go check it. Well, not right now, obviously, it. well, but it's so when, weird. When everything reopens up, yeah. Uh, so they're providing over three hundred meals a day to um, local essential workers like Respect, the police, dude, and, and hospitals and um, doctors and and things like that everyone that's out there doing the shit oh yeah they're doing trying the shit to fuel I could that not do, dude they're doing yeah. the shit where i'm just like i don't want i would just be like i'd be that asshole I'd be like i don't want to do this you guys are fucking right. on your own right so so, so we are feeding them yeah um so that's what they're doing but when rich and i got together uh he needed a pizza guy because he had a guy who was making pizza but he wasn't like a pizza guy you know what yeah. i mean he was kind of like a there he was a kitchen worker that like kind of has been learning the craft or whatever but I came in like a fucking ball of uh, fucking hell, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, how I am. I'm going to go fucking to balls to the wall. Right. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a whole ass creature of the night. Shout out to Laura Brennigan. Um, so he and I sat down, we had a conversation for about three hours and we just talked about how much we love pizza. And I was like, I love doing this. All I want to do is make pizza. And he was like, cool. Like I really need a pizza guy. So I didn't know what time I was showing up. I didn't know what day I was showing up. I didn't know what I was getting paid. I didn't know what I should wear. I didn't know what we were going to make, but I knew that I, he and I were going to get together and we were going to make pizza. Mm-hmm. So a couple of days later, I called him and I was like, Hey, like, let's hash out the numbers and this and that turns out he's going to pay me a lot more money than I thought he was going to pay me. Isn't that nice? It's so, it was so nice. He was like, dude, yeah, you're an animal. Like I want to pay you to be an animal. Just keep being an animal. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing led to another. I now am the head pizza aisle in his namesake, Corbo pizza. and Sons Pizzeria. Yeah, um, such good pizza. It's oh, so I good, dude. It, dude. Dude, it's so good. Um, thank you so much. Like, But he just needed a motherfucker that really loved pizza the way that he loved pizza. Mm-hmm. Um, so he and I got together. We created a menu. And now we're just putting out bad motherfucking pizza. Yeah. But every once in a while, Dan Ricker shows up from Raza. And uh, it's R I C R. I don't know that I'm pronouncing his last name correctly or incorrectly, but Dan from Raza is the baddest motherfucker. He is like, if you ask some Italian dude, be like, oh, have you heard of Raza? He's like, oh yeah, it's got a mooch, blah blah blah. They're the best. <laughs> um, it's got a mooch. So Dan, oh, Dan is the God. he's the number one baker in America, and he's the number one. He's like the number four pizza aisle in the country or some shit like that. This guy's an absolute fucking savage. He just happens to live 10 minutes away from the restaurant. What is that it? I why, why do so many like successful uh, people love, love this area so much? You know what I mean? I mean, because it's gorgeous, dude. You have the woods, you have the beach, you have the city, you have everything. I guess high taxes. That's this is the area. So Dan and I got together um, because he's a friend of Rich's and he was like, Hey, like if you ever want to come through and hang out and like Pizza talk to us me. about like gluten structure and like building like a sourdough starter, he's right. like, yeah, I'll be, th- I'll be there in 10 minutes. I got a question for you. Like, this is how I reheat pizza. And I know, I don't know. Whatever, mm, fresh pizza. Mm, what? I promise you, you're doing it wrong. I, I heat it to 500 and I do it for five minutes. Your oven? Yeah, heat it as high as it'll fucking go. That's not a bad. That's not a bad move. So I I judged you there, <laughs> he totally and I'm did. sorry. It's fine. Um, but what you can do and yeah. what you should do yeah. is, do you have a cast iron skillet? I do. Okay, so you use your cast iron skillet. Okay. Heat it up. Okay. Like super super hot. Yeah. Right. Put a touch of a little olive oil in there. And kind of wipe it down. You know what I mean? Take like a. Take like a paper towel uh-huh. and we'll kind of wipe your your paper t- your uh, your cast iron down, right? Get it super super hot. What you're doing is you're recreating a pizza oven. Mm. Okay, you put your pizza down in the oven mm-hmm. in the um in the pan. Okay, and then you take like a top, mm-hmm. like one of your glass pot tops. All right, and then you hold it over it, but you hover it. You give it you give about oh. this much steam. Wow. So that you build like a confection. How long do you do that right? for? Three minutes. Wow. Two minutes. You know that that reheat oven that everyone uses at pizzerias? Yeah. You're just recreating that. Oh. That's all wow, you're doing. dude. That sounds pretty good. 
it, dude, it's that is how you reheat pizza. If you have a personal pizza, mm-hmm. a personal pizza is twelve inches. Mm-hmm. A cast iron pan is twelve inches. How do you feel about uh, how do you feel about Sicilian pizza? I am a huge fan of Sicilian pizza. I've been feeling more comfortable coming out of the Sicilian closet and letting people know that I I really fucking dig Sicilian. Pizza. I'll tell you what, if if somebody knows what they're doing Mm -hmm. if somebody really fucks with bread if they really are like they're like a baker's motherfucker yeah then i would trust their sicilian pizza a lot of motherfuckers just do like a double dough like on some bullshit like it's over over salted over sugared fucking bullshit ass What's with sugar in like a sauce, dude? Like, cause you know, I don't you know what talk- you know that is. They're trying to they're trying to take the acidity out of a sauce. Mm-hmm. But what they really should do? Okay, so here, if you're listening to this and you're making a tomato sauce, if you want to make like a Sunday sauce, mm-hmm. you realistically only need like a couple of ingredients. You need salt. You need garlic. You need basil. Whatever herbs, uh, oregano, whatever, whatever, whatever. Like a little bit of crushed red pepper, something to kind of spice it up some whole ass pieces of garlic. If you think that it's too acidic and you add sugar, Mm -hmm. you're destroying the flavor. What you should do instead is as you're cooking your sauce, Mm -hmm. take a, a, a big ass carrot. Okay. Like a, Fucking a fat a big Bugs Bunny ass size carrot, dude. Like something that you could fuck someone with, <laughs> right? And you just shave it down, right? Uh-huh. You shave the carrot, uh-huh. and you just stick the whole carrot in your sauce. Okay, what does that do? And you cook it. All right. So what that carrot is going to do is it's going to suck up all of the acidity. Oh. And it's not going to add any sugar, any extra Dude, calories. My fucking, my- and it's not going to augment the fl- the flavor enough because the sugars from the carrot will cook out and vaporize. But the sugars that you add in, like a white sugar or a brown sugar, yeah. will not. They'll caramelize ah. and they'll add like a, a gnarly sweetness to your sauce and make it uh, like inauthentic. Uh-huh. It'll make it super authentic. artificial flavor. Dude, my, my in-laws love going to this motherfucking place called Skier Tino's in fucking South Amboy. And it is the fucking sugariest fucking sauce. Like, I don't know. I'm like white boy. I don't know shit about shit. But it's just not. You should fucking, make a sauce and cook a carrot in it. It's not. And boil their fucking mind. Yeah, it's not. Well, I, I'm just like, they all love going. I'm like, it's fucking, it's such a drive. And I'm like, this pizza is not, not very good, in my opinion, you know? But of course it's not, you know, because it's a bunch of motherfuckers that learned how to do shit in the 80s. And now they (laughs) they don't want to fucking relearn shit driving their Ferraris and fucking teasing their hair and shit. Oh, man. All right, dude. Well, on that note, uh, we drank, we talked and, you know, ultimately, I think this is this is the best podcast ever. So. This is a pretty good, a pretty great fucking podcast, dude. Dude, after dark is like my whole, my whole, you know, I'm, I'm really feeling it now, you know, like after. Thanks dark, for having dark. me on, man. I really yeah, do dude. appreciate it. Yeah, well, let's do. You know, there'll be more quarantines. I want to get a pizza, so we'll we'll figure some shit out. And uh, I got dough sitting in my refrigerator <laughs> right now, dude. And not only that, I can send you my recipe so that I can. I'm not making shit, dude. I got enough, bro. But I can. I'll Facetime you the whole time. Dude, I just want you to. I'm you just know how lazy. empowering it is to feed your family from something. I raw, feed, dude. I, I, I like. I, I feed them now. But like, if I'm gonna, uh, why would I? <laughs> I want a pizza that's gonna be awesome from you. It's gonna be awesome. I promise. I don't you. want to make a pizza myself that might not be as awesome. No, it's know? gonna be awesome. I promise you. I'll Facetime you the whole time. Well, I'd rather you have you just make it. But in the in the meantime, <laughs> dude, uh, this has been this has been. Oh wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'm All holding. Right. I'm still holding. There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Adam. Yeah, dude. Uh, uh, go listen to my podcast. Oh, follow yeah, me on shouts, Instagram. <laughs> uh, follow me on Instagram, earth underscore two underscore Adam. Uh, go follow us to the more podcast. Uh, go to the more podcast is some crazy shit. You guys got to go check it out. Oh, yeah, man. it's it's just a microcosm of what we talked about tonight. But, uh, <laughs> dude, thank you so much. Like, I fucking I love doing your show, obviously, yeah. and I love you, and I love Leo. I miss uh, Leo. And dude. as soon as this shit is over, we're gonna get together and we're gonna fucking smoke cigars. I promise you. Ah, uh, sounds good. We're gonna be smoking all kinds of shit. 
All right, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>